once human season two news are out and we only have to go on a Chinese streaming website to actually get the details early for you. Don't worry. We get all the translations you're looking for as we get this brand new open world forced PVP event going on. Yep. You do see the map as it is normal, but there's a difference now and that would be the border that you notice. Everything inside the border is safe zone. You're not marked as PVP there and your base cannot be attacked. But as soon as you step outside of the marked area, you are open world PVP. And you do actually want to be in the open world PVP. Technically, you could stay in the secure area and never leave, but there is something you need to gather to push your faction forward. Because at the beginning of the scenario, you choose one of two factions. You can choose Team Rosetta. The Rosetta team has the most advanced mechanical technology in the human world. You can control a drone with custom function modules to assist in combat. And sorry for the image quality. I was really hard finding something to translate this and actually show you. And the other faction is the Mayfly faction. It has the world's top bio transformation technology. You can defeat the mutants, extract gene fragments, and synthesize gene synchronization potions to enhance your physical abilities. Oh, oh, oh okay, cool, cool. Mayfly is in the Mayor's Market and the Traveler's Camp safe zone. And the Rosetta Conjunction is Heijun Town and Dirty Water Camp. And the goal is reverse anomalies. Push your faction forward. Screen in phase one looks essentially like this. One faction, other faction, and up there is the energy bar. You get to move to the left or the right by getting these reverse anomalies. How does it work? Let's read. Establish a territory in the confrontation zone. So the open world PVP. Place the captured reverse anomalies into independent containment units and begin containment. After a period of time, the reverse anomalies will generate enough reverse energy and transform themselves into ordinary anomalies. At the end of the season, the camp with more reverse energy wins and receives corresponding rewards. Starcrum and so on. This would happen in the open world PvP area. This would not happen in the safe zone. In the safe zone you prepare to essentially then go out, probably build yourself a very quick base up, put that thing in, and then with your lads, warband, open world, other PvPers, try to defend the reverse anomaly for points to then push your faction to the win. And there's actually a timetable that kind of breaks down how it's supposed to work. Phase events from zero to 12 every day. Buildings are protected and players damage to buildings is reduced by 70%. That would count for the open world PvP area. Then reverse coming, refreshed at 12 server time. In the public events in the confrontation area, reverse anomalies begin to descend. Public events would then be something like the Manibus coming down, the Fog events going up, the Black Sludge down bottom left of the map where you can teleport to. So all the cargo scramble, the, the public events essentially, you get reverse anomalies. Up to 50 descents per day which can be accumulated. Dragon begins to descend on the confrontation area with the one descending every 48 hours. Yeah, there, there's supposed to be a ginormous dragon coming, as it seems. Each takes what he needs. When the reverse energy reaches 60%, the advantage camp gains a 20% reduction in the time it takes to contain reverse anomalies. So they contain them faster, okay. And the disadvantage camp gains 20% reduction in building damage and 20% increase in global collection efficiency for materials and stuff, I assume. And the main reason we're doing this is for cool leaderboards and rewards, pushing your faction forward, getting Starcrom for putting that forward, probably having still your normal seasonal goals for Starcrom as well, which then will be maybe a bit more PVP oriented, like gather reverse anomalies, secure reverse anomalies, kill some other players, that kind of stuff. With new fancy skins that you might or might not care about, but I don't mind. And interestingly enough, it does seem to only have four faces. I'm not sure if they can scroll further there, but that's the symbol for the settlement phase already. So it seems to be a rather short season in comparison to the long six phase one, which is interesting in itself. I mean, you want a quick, dirty PVP scenario just banging it through. Why not? On top, there are fancy new mimetic specializations. Unlock the new recipe Gene Extractor, Synchronic Injection. When holding the Gene Extractor, defeating distorted enemies will give you different types of gene fragments according to their types. You can use the gene fragments 
to make gene synchronic injection to improve your collection ability after taking 70 percent of your hp and damage the current synchronic effect will be removed okay okay cool unlock new recipe gene extractor judgment synchronization so these are all gene extractors that give you improve your mobility improve your combat capabilities and then improve your attack and defense well i do think just for mayflies to just boost them a little up and then for rosetta we get the drones focus module wide area module extreme speed and support special props that can be used to strengthen the drone to unlock it advanced harvesting drone when mining in the confrontation zone the drone has a chance to obtain 10 to 100 barrels of crude oil from the underground rock formations firepower drone unstable bomb effect can be triggered when the drone attacks exploration drone stamina consumption reduced by 50 territory drone after the drone has accumulated 10 hits it will provide five plus five percent gun damage okay so that can be used to strengthen the drone unlocking okay this collection drone this drone can double the output when collecting minerals and will destroy all collected objects within three meter range when player holds a collection tool, the maximum endurance value is increased by 50 points. So far, I like the drones more than those bio concoctions. I'm, but then again, I'm just a fan of drones. And if I could join the Rosetta faction, I'd do it. End of the day, you might or might not be a fan of the PvP, but you could probably still join the server, be in the safe zone and farm materials for your team to push them forward. As you can see, not everything of the map is kind of available. These are only limited regions available. And I would assume that tungsten probably is farmable everywhere. So we're not going to be like limited to only having iron in the beginning because else one region is going to have the upper region and the other the other team is going to have the lower region and then they're not going to get the respective resources. So I'd rather think that every resource is available kind of everywhere. When end of the day, you can still probably knock out every single city, get every single mystical crate and just get all your blueprints. So again, making your blueprints go further stay in the safe zone provide your team with materials bullets upgrades whatsoever get the right mimetic specializations that you can then bring your team forward because if you manage to get some of the more defensive specializations that actually work for pvp uh i mean you might be actually helpful for your hive for your warband just doing the do instead of engaging in combat but yet, if you then do want to engage in the combat and do want to secure the super anomalies, I mean, you don't necessarily even have to fight, right? You could just run in with your team, start building up the little base that you need to secure the anomaly while your friends or people around you, acquaintances, are fighting off whatever's going on. I mean, this seems to be a public event where anomalies are spawning and they're just fighting against each other. All in all, this could be fun might actually make me consider pvp bit scared about the desync delay too many people being in one region crashing the servers but maybe they limit the amount of people per server harshly so that doesn't happen could be a good thing could be a bad thing might be interesting what do you think drop it in the comments below and if you now want to see a very good very good build to currently rampage over heart servers normal servers heart mode pro mode everything enjoy the mg4 predator and thank you for watching